Hello and welcome to this channel. In this video we will talk about gastric cancer. Gastric cancer, also known as stomach cancer, is a type of cancer that develops in the lining of the stomach. It is the fifth most common cancer worldwide and the third leading cause of cancer-related deaths. The incidence of gastric cancer varies by geography, with the highest rates occurring in Eastern Asia, Eastern Europe and South America. The age of diagnosis is most often between 70 and 75 years. What are the risk factors to develop gastric cancer? The exact cause of gastric cancer is not known, but several factors have been identified as risk factors for its development. These include a diet high in salted, smoked and pickled foods, a history of Helicobacter pylori infection, chronic gastritis, pernicious anemia, smoking and a family history of gastric cancer. What are the symptoms of gastric cancer? Symptoms of gastric cancer may include indigestion, heartburn, abdominal pain, loss of appetite, nausea and vomiting, unintentional weight loss and fatigue. In the early stages, gastric cancer may not cause any symptoms, which makes it difficult to diagnose and often delays a diagnosis. At the point of diagnosis, around 70% of patients already have a metastasis to the lymph nodes. How can we diagnose gastric cancer? Diagnosis of gastric cancer or precancerous lesions involves several tests and procedures. Precancerous stomach lesions or a carcinoma of the stomach can be found through several diagnostic tests and procedures. These include First endoscopy This is a procedure in which a flexible tube with a camera is inserted through the mouth and into the stomach to examine the lining for any abnormalities. During an endoscopy, a biopsy may be taken to collect a small sample of tissue for examination under a microscope. The second test we can do is an upper gastrointestinal series. This is a type of X-ray that uses contrast dye to highlight the lining of the stomach and small intestine. Abnormalities such as tumors or precancerous lesions can be detected on the X-ray images. The third test is a stool test. This test can detect the presence of blood or other biomarkers in the stool that may indicate the presence of a precancerous lesion or cancer. The fourth is blood tests. Certain blood tests, such as the carbohydrate antigen 199 and carcinoembryonic antigen tests, can help detect the presence of certain biomarkers that may indicate the presence of stomach cancer or precancerous lesions. And the last test is a biopsy. A biopsy is a procedure in which a small sample of tissue is removed from the stomach lining and examined under a microscope to detect any abnormalities such as precancerous lesions or cancer. It is important to note that not all precancerous lesions will progress to cancer and not all cases of stomach cancer are preceded by a precancerous lesion. However, detecting and treating precancerous lesions early can help prevent the development of stomach cancer and improve outcomes for patients. Precancerous lesions, also known as precursor lesions, are abnormal changes in the cells of the stomach lining that can potentially develop into stomach cancer over time. These lesions are important to identify because they provide an opportunity for early detection and intervention to prevent a progression to cancer. The two most common types of precancerous lesions in the stomach are first gastric atrophy 
and second, intestinal metaplasia. Gastric atrophy is a condition in which the normal stomach lining is replaced by inflamed, damaged tissue. Gastric atrophy can be caused by chronic infection with a bacterium Helicobacter pylori, which is a major risk factor for stomach cancer. The damaged tissue can eventually develop into a precancerous lesion called intestinal metaplasia. Intestinal metaplasia is a condition in which the normal glandular cells in the stomach lining are replaced by cells that are similar to those found in the intestine. Intestinal metaplasia is often caused by long-term inflammation in the stomach, such as that caused by H. pylori infection. The presence of intestinal metaplasia increases the risk of developing stomach cancer, particularly the intestinal type. Other types of precancerous lesions in the stomach include dysplasia and adenomas. Dysplasia is a condition in which the cells in the stomach lining become abnormal and disorganized, which can progress to cancer if left untreated. Adenomas are growths in the stomach lining that can also progress to cancer over time. If precancerous lesions are detected in the stomach, Treatment may involve removing the abnormal tissue through endoscopy or surgery. Treatment may also include antibiotics to treat H. pylori infection, which can help prevent the development of precancerous lesions. Regular monitoring of precancerous lesions is important to detect any changes or progression to cancer. How can we classify and stage gastric cancer? There are several ways to classify stomach cancer. The most common classification system is based on a location of the tumor in the stomach, which can be divided into four main types. The first, cardia cancer. This type of stomach cancer occurs in the area where the esophagus meets the stomach, known as the cardia. Around 10% of cancers occur in this area. The second is fundus cancer. This type of stomach cancer occurs in the upper part of the stomach, known as the fundus. Around 10% of cancers occur here. The third is body cancer. This type of stomach cancer occurs in the middle part of the stomach, known as the body. Also around 10% of cancers occur here. And the last type is the antrum cancer. This type of stomach cancer occurs in the lower part of the stomach, known as the antrum. Around half of all cancer cases occur in this area. Another classification system for stomach cancer is based on the histological type of the tumor, which refers to the appearance of the cancer cells under a microscope. The main histological types of stomach cancer are First, adenocarcinoma. This is the most common type of stomach cancer, accounting for over 90% of all cases. Adenocarcinoma arises from the glandular cells in the lining of the stomach. Second, lymphoma. This is a rare type of stomach cancer that develops in the lymphatic tissue of the stomach. Third, gastrointestinal stromal tumor. This is a rare type of stomach cancer that arises from the connective tissue in the stomach. And fourth, carcinoid tumor. This is a rare type of stomach cancer that arises from the hormone-producing cells in the stomach. Stomach cancer can also be classified based on the stage of the cancer, which is determined by the size of the tumor and whether it has spread to nearby lymph nodes or other parts of the body. The staging system helps determine the treatment options and prognosis for stomach cancer. The most commonly used staging system for stomach cancer is the TNM system, which stands for Tumor Node Metastasis. The TNM system helps classify the extent of the cancer and guide treatment decisions. 
The following is a brief overview of the TNM stages of gastric cancer. Stage 0. This stage is also known as carcinoma in situ, which means that the cancer cells are confined to the inner layer of the stomach lining and have not spread to nearby lymph nodes or other organs. Stage 1. In stage 1, the cancer has invaded the muscle layer of the stomach wall, or may or may not have spread to nearby lymph nodes. There is no distant metastasis. Stage 2. In stage 2, the cancer has invaded deeper into the stomach wall and may or may not have spread to nearby lymph nodes. There is no distant metastasis. Stage 3. In stage 3, the cancer has spread to nearby lymph nodes and may or may not have invaded nearby organs or tissues. There is no distant metastasis. Stage 4. In stage 4, the cancer has spread to distant organs or tissues, such as the liver, lungs or bones. The tumor may be any size and may or may not have spread to nearby lymph nodes. Within each stage, there may be subcategories that further describe the extent of the cancer. The TNM system is used in combination with other factors, such as the patient's age and overall health, to determine the best treatment plan and predict the prognosis for gastric cancer. How can we treat gastric cancer? Treatment options for gastric cancer depend on the stage of the cancer and may include surgery, chemotherapy, radiation therapy, or a combination of these treatments. Surgery is often the preferred treatment for early stage gastric cancer and it may involve removing part or all of the stomach. In more advanced cases, chemotherapy and radiation therapy may be used to shrink the tumor before surgery or to slow the progression of the cancer if surgery is not an option. What is the prognosis for gastric cancer? The prognosis for gastric cancer depends on the stage of the cancer at the time of diagnosis. Early stage gastric cancer has a higher chance of being cured, while more advanced stages may be more difficult to treat. The overall 5 year survival rate for gastric cancer is around 31%, but this varies widely depending on the stage of the cancer and other factors. Is there any prevention for gastric cancer? Prevention of gastric cancer involves reducing the risk factors that have been identified, such as avoiding a diet high in salted, smoked and pickled foods, treating Helicobacter pylori infection and quitting smoking. Regular checkups with a doctor can also help detect any early signs of gastric cancer. In conclusion, Gastric cancer is a type of cancer that develops in the lining of the stomach and is a significant public health problem worldwide. Although the exact cause of gastric cancer is unknown, several risk factors have been identified. Symptoms of gastric cancer may be nonspecific, which makes early diagnosis challenging. Treatment options for gastric cancer depend on the stage of the cancer and the prognosis varies widely. Prevention of gastric cancer involves reducing the risk factors that have been identified and regular checkups with a doctor. That's it for this video. I hope it was helpful and if you like our channel, please subscribe. Thank you very much and hopefully see you again in the next video.